So a hacker just stole $25 million worth of cryptocurrency over the weekend. And this is big news that's floating around in the blockchain space, particularly in the Ethereum space. Uh, and I'm actually just learning about this myself. So I want to make this video to tell you all about it, uh, kind of outline all the details of the attack and also offer you my perspective on this as a blockchain developer. Like, what does this mean for blockchain technology? What does this mean for the DeFi space in general? All right. So uh, before we get into all that, if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory from DAP University. And on this channel, I teach you how to become a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then click the like button down below and click subscribe. And if you want to learn how to become a blockchain developer step by step, uh, then head on over to dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, so let's get into this. How did a hacker steal over $25 million worth of cryptocurrency over the weekend? All right, so there's a lot of different details here. We don't know if it's just one hacker, if it's multiple hackers, um, because there were there were different attacks totaling up to this amount of money. All right, I'm explaining all that in this video, like how it happened um, and what this means, okay? So also some of the details are still rolling in. So by the time this video uh, makes it out, there may be some updates, um, but I'll put a link to my sources down in the description so that you can you know read all this and verify it yourself. So basically what happened is uh, several different DeFi protocols were exploited this weekend and funds were stolen from them. And so if you're not sure what DeFi is, I'll explain. Basically, it's taking existing financial products and putting them on the blockchain. Things like savings, loans, uh, exchanges, for example. Okay. And uh, several of these DeFi protocols were exploited and that's how money was taken this weekend. All right. So we don't know if it was more than one hacker, uh, if it was multi if it was just one hacker because they there were different exploits. So one of the first exploits that happened drained over $300,000 from the decentralized exchange Uniswap. Okay. So um, it was multiple different assets. It was Ethereum and also uh, IMBTC, which is basically tokenized Bitcoin. All right. Um, so most of the protocols uh, for DeFi exist on the Ethereum platform and they use smart contracts. Okay. And, uh, you know, Ether or Ethereum is a native cryptocurrency that is compatible with these smart contracts. And also, uh, in order to make Bitcoin compatible, you have to have to tokenize it with a smart contract so that it's able to be used by these as well. And so these two assets were taken um, in that first hack. Okay. And the second hack was on DeForce. Okay. This is a uh, D DeFi protocol and they lost $25 million worth of funds. Okay. So both of these things added up. It's a pretty big loss for the space over the weekend. All right. So, uh, we don't know if it was the same hacker that did this or not, or if basically uh, one hacker did it, exposed the vulnerability, and then also took advantage, or maybe someone else learned about it and took advantage of a different uh, protocol with a similar technique. Okay, so here's why. And I'll explain how the hack happened. And if somebody knows for sure, uh, feel free to leave a comment down in the comment section below if, if, you know, if you think that's wrong or if you have pretty good insight into what the hacker actually did um, and why it might be the same or different, then I'm, I'm all ears. I I'd like to know down in the comment section below. Okay. So uh, what, what did the hacker do? Well, basically, they took advantage of a particular vulnerability with an Ethereum token. So the hacker took advantage of a vulnerability that has to do with the ERC-777 standard on Ethereum uh, for the Uniswap protocol. And this was also exploited for uh, the DeForce attack as well. So basically, they were able to withdraw funds from these protocols before the protocols, uh, before the balance actually updated. And so it would know to not let the users withdraw these types of funds, right? And it just did this over and over and was able to gradually drain uh, the entire smart contract balance. So that's how it happened on Uniswap. And that's the exact same technique that was also used on uh, DeForce as well. So that begs the question, uh, was this the same attacker in both instances? Or did the attacker do this once uh, on Uniswap? And then, you know, someone else found out about it, learned of it, um, and then did the same thing on their exchange as well. Was this, you know, an inside job? Was, you know, there's all kinds of questions that come up. I don't claim to have the answers to. Uh, I'm sure that we'll find out. Maybe we'll see more answers to this as time goes on. And now that the hacker has these funds, they've just transferred them to their own account. Uh, some of these protocols are actually trying to enter into to negotiations with the hacker. And they're doing this by sending them messages on the blockchain uh, with their email address inside of them so they can take uh, negotiations offline and actually try to get some of the money back. Okay. So basically what they're saying is, you know, hacker, if you stole $25 million worth of cryptocurrency or whatever, 
whatever the number is, right? Then basically we'll let you keep a small portion of that. You just give us most of it back and uh, we won't you know, pursue legal action against you. And so that's where things lie currently, right? The hackers still have these funds at the time recording this video and the protocols, at least some of them are in... Um, you know, negotiations, try to get some of their funds back. All right. So um, that's a little bit of a cliffhanger, right? We're still kind of in the middle of this. And that raises a lot of questions like, um, is blockchain technology ready for prime time? You know, is DeFi ready? Or, or do do real world, are mainstream users ready to put their money in things like this? Like, is this a total deal breaker for blockchain in general? So I'm going to offer my perspective on that because I know this has raised lots of questions and there's lots of debates out there. All right. So, um, my perspective is maybe a little bit crazy. Uh, you feel free to totally disagree with me. Um, but the way I see this is that these types of attacks are inevitable and it's growing pains that we have to get through in order for blockchain and DeFi to actually reach prime time. All right. So I'll be a hundred percent transparent in that I, I do not advocate for anyone to steal money. All right. I don't want to steal money myself. I'm not telling you to steal money. I don't want someone to steal money. But what I'm saying is people are going to steal money because of human nature. All right. I don't think that's ever going to change. So part of the development life cycle, the way the incentives work is that there's actually an incentive for bad actors to act. All right. And we have to actually build protocols that are resistant to bad actors acting because I just think that bad actors are going to act regardless of what whatever we do. Okay. And so this is a necessary growing pain to go past. Okay. And some people will say, well, Hey, you know, we want white hat hackers, all that kind of stuff who are going to act honestly, but really the incentive is much greater for a black hat actor to act because they can actually steal the funds because the upside is much bigger for a black hat, uh, hacker. So when attacks like this happen, they actually help us draw a safe zone that is comfortable for mainstream users to operate inside of. Okay, we've had lots of pr attacks happen in the past. As people are saying, this is kind of crazy because we've seen a series of uh, attacks happen in the past three months, almost like one per month. But these attacks actually help us define where the safe zone is for other mainstream users to operate inside of. And that's why I always advise people not to put large sums of money in really experimental technology, right? So I, I've always said on my channel, like, you should do your research before you try to lock a lot of money into a DeFi protocol to earn interest, all that kind of stuff. I follow the same practices myself. Um, but as this technology matures over time, becomes less experimental, and we can draw out these safe zones, we can define like where we're confident that mainstream users can actually uh, operate inside of. So I don't think this is a deal breaker for DeFi in the long run. I don't think it's a deal deal breaker for blockchain in the long run, but it should make you look before you leap uh, when you decide you want to put a large amount of money into very experimental protocols. Okay. So some other side effects of this are um, that this is a bad look for the ERC 777 standard. So if you're not sure what that means, basically Ethereum has these like standards for how you build cryptocurrencies. ERC 20 is the most popular token standard on Ethereum. ERC 777 is a different standard. And some people like really push for the adoption of ERC 77. And some people think that this, these hacks um, basically are a bad look for ERC 77 and might actually slow down uh, the adoption of something like that. So, I mean, me personally, all the projects that I ever work on have been ERC 20 projects. I mean, it just seems to have such a, a large market share, share and it's a much simpler standard that seems to do everything that we want most tokens to do in the first place. That's kind of my perspective on this. All right. So the last thing I want to show you, um, this is more for the developers watching this video, is how you can actually send messages on Ethereum because this is how people are actually communicating with the hackers. So I'll show you an example here. Um, essentially what you can do is create a message inside of an Ethereum transaction. So, uh, a lot of people don't know this, but Ethereum transactions can be pretty complex. All right. So, um, you know, if an Ethereum transaction is, is just really any record on the Ethereum blockchain that some sort of action was taken. All right. The most common transaction is just sending a cryptocurrency. Right. So if I send Ethereum or Ether uh, from to you from my account, that creates a, a transaction on Ethereum. So transactions can hold data inside of them too. Like that's how you call smart contract functions. Like if you want to buy tokens in an ICO or something like that, you're interacting with the smart contract and doing a more, I guess, sophisticated transaction than just sending cryptocurrency. But in addition to that, you can also just put like arbitrary input data that gets encoded as a message. So 
theoretically, I could pay some small amount of cryptocurrency to create a transaction and send money to you. And that's how uh, people were actually communicating with the attacker uh, to negotiate these kinds of uh, deals, right? So it, it, this is why this is important. So if, if I'm anonymous, I'm on the blockchain, and I you know hack a protocol, and nobody knows who I am, right? How do you communicate with me? Right. I, I, you can't send me an email. I don't have my email address. I'm not logged in somewhere. You may not know my IP address if I have some pretty sophisticated uh, VPN tech or something like that. Right. So what you can do is basically just try to send them messages and you do it with a transaction. So here's an example. You basically create some sort of input data um, and it will go in with a transaction. You can see an example of it here on Etherscan. Right. So that's what the uh, protocols were doing. They were putting their email addresses in and saying, hey, basically, you know, let's take this offline and try to work out a deal. All right. So that's just something that's cool for the technical folks, the developers out there who want to know more about how this happened. Right. So uh, that's all I got for today. That's how the $25 million series of hacks went down over this weekend. Um, hope you all like this video. Again, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Click the like button down below. Really helps this videos get found so that more people can, you know, learn about blockchain. And if you want to become a blockchain developer step by step, uh, I can show you how to do exactly that. Head on over to dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started. All right. Until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.